sitting here enjoying my book in the window seat. But there is some serious noxious smell coming from some little black critter seated next to me. I'm talking seriously bad breath. Here's what you can do about it. Hello you guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new, welcome. If you've yet to do so, I'd love for you to click up there to subscribe to my channel. Click down here to sign up for notifications. And then when you click the link further in the box below, I can send you my free book and my free videos on how to heal your pets at home with my top natural remedies. So somebody in this picture, the video you're watching, has some pretty bad breath, and it's not me. Meaning, I've talked about halitosis in the past, but this is slightly new. Tula's breath has really changed for the worse. Um, or hearing a pile of complaints anytime we go on a car trip, I'm like, ah, get her off of me. So I want to just go over in detail again, you know, what's causing it. I'm going to try some sort of five new remedies, see if they're going to work for her. Maybe they're going to help you and your dog. So here's Tula's little mouth and I'm going to show you where the source of all the smell is coming from. If you can look, she's got moderate tartar now. You can see this, you know, this tartar build up here, this big upper carnasial tooth. Yeah, her gums, see you there, a little bit red. And a little girl, Let's see if she'll show me this side. More gingivitis, a bit of tartar, not canine tooth, bit of gingivitis above it. So clearly the cause of this halitosis, this bad breath, is a type of bacteria uh, that's grown in her mouth and some of the end byproducts or that smell or that odor. Tula eats food, say this yummy piece of cheese. Where Tula? Good girl. Mmm. Some of those food particles are going to rain be remain behind in her mouth. Bacteria can build on that, turn into plaque, turn into tartar, and produce a big part of that smelly breath. So what can you do? Well, obviously the biggest and most obvious thing is you know limiting the amount of plaque, the amount of tartar, the secondary gingivitis by you know a combination of if you can be brushing your dog's teeth. When it gets really severe, you're gonna have to look at taking your dog into the veterinarian, have a dental scale and polish. Um, you're doing whatever you can to minimize you know, that, that food turning to plaque to tartar. It's, but it's just more than that. It's that some dogs just have naturally worse breath than others, regardless of, you know, they can have a mild bit of tartar and they have horrible breath. And we see other dogs with horrible gum disease and oh, their breath doesn't smell too bad. So there's more, more going on here. So it's a matter of, you know, if you've got a dog in particular and they really have this bad, bad breath, they've got moderate, moderate you know, their gums are actually fairly healthy looking, your veterinarian you said, yeah, it's okay, then really consider some of these remedies. So the first big thing is more water. The big primary thing that's causing the bacteria to grow is food, you know, such as the protein in this cheese. And as soon as your dog has eaten, the more fluid they can consume, they can wash off that high protein, which the bacteria, the bad breath bacteria love to thrive on, their breath is going to smell better. So do whatever you can to increase water consumption. So one of the things you can consider is adding some type of stock, you know, a little bit of, of minerals, um, Salt, for instance, it's in like a veggie stock. I have this chicken stock here. We are going to Tula's water bowl. And I want to see if we add this stuff. Will she actually drink it? Let's add like, I'm going to add a half a teaspoon. Good girl, look at that. Mm. Tula's not a big drinker. I really would love to see her drink more. And I sure know when she gets, when we go on car trips, She's extra stressed, she pants a lot, she gets herself dehydrated, she doesn't drink. There's way more bacteria, worse, worse breath. Okay, here it is, Tula, moment of truth. Good girl, look at that yummy stock. Mmm. Good girl, here, come here, here. Mmm.
Next, you could try brushing, but in particular, I might want to have you try something different. So what I've got is this baking soda. So one of the thoughts is that in the bacteria that are produced in the mouth, that produce this really bad breath with people, they're wondering about it being produced in a more acidic environment, which it seems pretty common. So often when people drink orange juice, my breath is so bad. Um, and then there's other foods that were produced when they're broken down, they produce certain products that produce a bad breath. So in terms of dealing with that sort of acidic environment, one thing is consider something like sodium bicarbonate or here, baking soda. I don't know if it's gonna work for your dog or not. I do wanna test it out in Tula, do a little breath test after. So here it is beforehand. Yeah, her, her breath really is not really good. So, cup, mm. a teaspoon or so of baking soda in her cup. A bit of water just to make it into a paste, which is what I've got. You guys may be able to see that there or not. Uh, there's, okay, so there you got. I mean, that's what you're left with. It looks kind of like a toothpaste. This is an old toothbrush I no longer use. I'm using this on Tula for sake of the video. Okay, let's try it out. Hey, girl. Tula's not super keen on this whole toothbrush idea. Go, girl. If you are to brush your dog's teeth, you want to focus right where the teeth up here, right where the teeth meet the gum line. Because what we're trying to do is deal with that gingivitis. How does the breath smell now? Definitely a bit better. The third thing is considering a flush that you can make at home that's gonna just flush naturally flush out that bacteria. Ideally, you're gonna be doing it right after they eat. So ideally, it's gonna be that twice a day you're, they're gonna finish eating, flush out as much of that protein that's sort of left in there in the teeth to turn into plaque in the first place. And hopefully it's also something that's potentially good for your dog if they ingest it. So what am I thinking of? Mm. Green tea. So I've got here a cup of green tea. I actually brewed a fresh pot. All right. And got my handy dandy syringe. Somewhere here, my sort of willing dog. And so just assume, Tula just had a bit of food. She actually just ate some of that cheese, for instance. What have I got? I mean, what is this? Yeah, that's about a tablespoon or so of green tea. I like a syringe because you can flush it right in. Just start at the top of your dog's mouth, but especially on those working your way into those back molars, ones that often seem difficult to clean properly and they build up most of the tartar. So look, you're just putting a few drops in each tooth, flushing it right on the gum line. Mm. And Tula can drink that. She doesn't mind it, so it's another good source of fluid for her. So green tea is not just a, are we only flushing with the fluid, it's also antibacterial. So it's helping, you know, decrease the growth of that bacteria that's causing the bad breath in the first place. Go girl, Tula. Okay, there's your green tea flush. Now let's do the breath taste. Oh, much better. You smell like green tea. Ooh. The fourth one is gonna be a little bit more difficult to give, um, but the reason I'm considering it is it's also very effective as being antibacterial, has other potential medicinal benefits for their dog, your dog if they're to ingest it, um, along with you know proving to be helpful for a whole array of different uh, veterinary health problems. What is it? The apple cider vinegar. Here, just a little more difficult to get into your dog. This is a remedy used in people. Some people swear by it. It makes a huge difference for you know helping with gingivitis, which it would. You know, it's antibacterial, it's gonna help de decrease with gingival inflammation. Then it should help with bad breath. But we can tolerate that kind of e vinegary taste. Our dogs, not so much. So what I'm wondering is, could we actually, I'm gonna try adding it to some green tea. I'm gonna use about, a, you know, here, what have I got? I'm gonna use about half of this. Oh. So we've got about 
a little over a teaspoon or so to about this, about a half a cup of green tea. Mix in this concoction. Okay, I'm gonna taste it first. Hmm, it's definitely vinegary, but the green tea cuts down the, mm, the kick. Once again, we're doing this as a flush. I'm not meaning for her to have to ingest it. So let's try the green tea, apple cider vinegar. Okay, Tula. This could be the reason why she's not so crazy about all these videos. Good girl. Okay, let's try it. Uh, mm. This one. Oh, here, let me do it. Okay, so my fingers get back there. Okay, so what do you think of that? Good girl, there. Let me smell your breath now. Oh, I think it's even better. Wow, oh, good girl. Oh, you did it, oh. Now the last thing I wanna try is this. The actual are carrots, fruit and vegetables that you can give to your dog after they've eaten. To one, do a couple things. One, potentially, you know, decrease that chunks of food that may be left in between the teeth so it doesn't turn into as much plaque and tartar. And secondarily, two, using something like these as a treat will cause the act of more saliva to form. The more time, the more saliva that's in your dog's mouth, the uh, more likely it's gonna wash away some of that food. Secondary, it's gonna alter uh, the alter the environment within the mouth itself, and you're gonna, gonna get less odor growing bacteria. Just think, the more fluid, the better, the more oxygen in the mouth, the better. Saliva is a great source for that. These carrots are a really good idea as far as you know something that's gonna help get rid of the chunks of food that might be left. Tula, I don't know, apples be another option. I'm trying to think of things that are a little bit abrasive. They're gonna rub, out, rub away chunks of food in the teeth, but are fairly low in protein and that kind of harmful odor causing bacteria. So what do you think of this, Tula? Mmm, <gasps> good girl. I'll eat it if you eat it. Good girl, look. Mmm, problem is Tula's not great to build carrots, but if your dog is, feed more of them. Or things as a snack. Thank you guys so much for watching this edition of Veterinary Secrets. I hope you found it helpful. If you've yet to do so, I'd love for you to click up there to subscribe. Click down there to like this video. And lastly, when you click the link further in the box below, and when you sign up for my newsletter, I can send you my free books, my free videos, how to heal your pets at home with my top natural remedies. Meet your veggies.